Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. The investigation into a triple death that played out from Billings to West Yellowstone last week has now turned up a fourth body. Well, have the details on this latest shocking twist. But first, the three week trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin ends with three guilty verdicts for the murder of George Floyd. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. It's the verdict many across the country and the world have been anticipating. After about 10 hours of deliberating, a jury found Derek Chauvin guilty of murdering George Floyd. Michael George has the latest from Minneapolis. Find the defendant guilty. Derek Chauvin appeared to remain motionless as the judge in his murder trial read one guilty verdict after another. Find the defendant guilty. The jury convicted the fired Minneapolis police officer on all three charges, second and third degree murder and second degree manslaughter. Jurors deliberated about 10 hours over two days after three weeks of testimony from 45 witnesses. Crowds erupted in cheers outside the courthouse. Thank God for Minnesota for the truth. And at the spot where Floyd died last Memorial Day when his neck was pinned under Chauvin's knee for more than nine minutes. This has been a very hard ride for every person of color. The disturbing images sparked nationwide outrage, sometimes violent protests, and a national reckoning on racial justice. I would not call today's verdict justice, however, but it is accountability. During closing arguments, prosecutors asked jurors to believe their eyes after seeing the video played again and again in court. The defense argued other factors, such as drugs and health issues, contributed to the 46-year-old's death. More than 3,000 National Guard members stood watch here in Minneapolis as the nation anxiously awaited the verdict. President Biden calls the verdict a step forward. No one should be above the law. And today's verdict sends that message. But it's not enough. We can't stop here. Floyd's brother expressed relief, but said the search for justice isn't over. We have to protest because it seems like this is a never-ending cycle. Chauvin's bail was revoked, and he was taken out of the courtroom in handcuffs. The judge is expected to sentence Chauvin in about eight weeks. Michael George, CBS News, Minneapolis. Well, the death of George Floyd at the hands of Derek Chauvin led to protest across the country, some that turned violent and destructive, others that were peaceful, like the one here in Billings. More than a thousand people crowded the streets of downtown Billings last June for a protest in March to remember Floyd and call for justice in the wake of his death. Many of them laid face down on their stomachs in the middle of the street with their hands behind their back, chanting, I can't breathe, as Floyd had done before he died. Now, I caught up with two of the people who helped organize that event, Ken and Amber Palmer, to get their reaction to today's verdict. My stomach was just in knots because I really didn't know what to expect. I mean, with cases that have happened like this previously, there has been no punishment. I, I wasn't prepared for them to say guilty. I was hoping beyond hope that they said guilty, but I was prepared for them to say not guilty. So them saying guilty was a huge relief. I've, I've dealt with my own situations with police you know, being profiled, you know, just for how I look, walking down the street, being questioned, being hassled, being harassed. There is good that can come from this. I mean, this is definitely a small step in the right direction, and it just shows that things are changing, and hopefully now more people will be held accountable for their violent actions towards anybody. Um, I mean, just because you commit a crime or because you're suspected doesn't mean that you need to be murdered. So even though this verdict, you know, was great and it needed to happen, you know, we still have a long way to go. Derek Chauvin could face up to about 75 years behind bars. A bizarre twist in a triple death investigation that spans from Avenue B in Billings to West Yellowstone and now back to Avenue B. Billings police are now investigating the suspicious death of another woman found in a home this morning just nine blocks away from last week's murder scene. As Q2's Andrea Lutz reports, it's the home of a woman accused in the death of her mother just five days earlier. Billings police are investigating the circumstances surrounding yet another death here on Avenue B. And while the cause of the death is not quite known, what is known is that this death is related to three recent others. We are looking at uh, the motive. Uh, we're looking at the chain of events. 
Billings officers were sent to 28-year-old Erica Miller's home shortly after 1 a.m. A family member reporting the body of an unidentified woman was found inside. The whole investigation at this point is, is, is fact-finding, fact gathering. Miller was interviewed by me back in March of 2020 concerning a COVID-19 testing story. Police say this latest death at her home adds to an already expansive investigation. Officers were out at the residence uh, during the initial stages off like the 14th, 15th and 16th uh, and they were unable to make contact with anybody. Since then family has been in the residence multiple times uh, prior to even last night. Just days earlier Miller's mother Roxanne Watson was murdered at her home also on Avenue B. Police say Miller and her boyfriend Henry Porter are suspects in that murder. There's nothing to indicate that there's other victims at this point. The two died in an apparent murder-suicide following a police chase in Gallatin County. And Woolley says even though no suspects so far mean no charges, a comprehensive investigation will still have to follow. The case will still be reviewed by the county attorney's office, uh, so there could be some closure for the public. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. Thanks, Andrea. And by law, because there's a matter of death and the coroner's involved, every death that meets a certain criteria is deemed criminal until established otherwise. Officials say this investigation could take as long as a year to complete. And one day after a Billings woman was shot in the head as bullets pierced her doorway, the suspect remains on the loose. But tonight, Billings police tell us they do not believe the suspect is a threat to the public. Billings Police Chief Rich St. John tells Q2 the investigation is ongoing into yesterday's attack at an apartment complex in the 4100 block of King Avenue East. Multiple shots were fired through the door of one of the units just after noon, and a 45-year-old woman was hit in the head. St. John says the investigation so far is leading detectives to believe the victim and the suspect were acquainted. The victim remains in the hospital tonight. No word on her condition. Now turning to Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh in the Weather Center. A quiet close to home, but uh, it's uh, an active scene across much of the country, Ed. That's right, especially as we start looking to areas to our east, anywhere from the Dakotas. And you can see this line of snow showers from just north of Memphis all the way up into Canada tonight. It's actually putting down some pretty good snow in several locations and some thunderstorms out ahead of it. Meantime, we're also watching areas where it could get pretty chilly first thing tomorrow, especially in areas as we start looking into the southern plains where it could be record cold temperatures first thing tomorrow. Notice the fire concerns as we start looking closer to the Carolinas and also into the Four Corners region where things have been very dry. We'll take a closer look at our forecast details through the weekend and beyond coming up in a few minutes. Well, Northwestern Energy is planning to build a new $250 million natural gas plant in Laurel. The utility made that announcement today as part of its plans to boost long-term capacity resources. That plant will be known as the Laurel Generating Station. It will generate 175 megawatts using reciprocating internal combustion engines. Northwest Energy did not say where it will be built, but hopes to have it online on January 3rd, 2024. The application will be submitted to the Montana Public Service Commission around May 14th, and the approval process could take up to nine months. New tonight at 10, the Montana Senate voted down a bill to prohibit gender transition surgeries for transgender youth, likely killing it for this session. At first, House Bill 427 was set for a debate on the House floor today. The leaders delayed that vote. Senator Bryce Bennett, a Democrat from Missoula, then moved to indefinitely postpone the bill. That motion passed 27 to 22, with eight Republicans joining all Democrats. A similar but broader bill to block additional procedures failed on the House floor earlier in the session. The Montana Democratic Party is now suing over two bills, tightening rules for voters in the state. This after Governor Greg Gianforte signed them into law yesterday. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian tells us what they're challenging. Montana Democrats say the two bills they're challenging put unnecessary burdens on the ability to vote, especially for students, older voters, the disabled, and Native Americans. And they say the state hasn't provided enough justification for them. The state Democratic Party filed suit against Secretary of State Christy Jacobson, a Republican, in Yellowstone County District Court. They're asking the court to stop her from enforcing House Bill 176 and Senate Bill 169. 
The party's executive director, Sandy Lucky, said, quote, fair access to the ballot box for all eligible voters, whether they are Republicans, Democrats, or independents, is essential to the Montana way of life. We will continue to hold accountable any leader who attacks our democratic institutions. House Bill 176 would remove the option for voters to register on Election Day. Late registration would be closed at noon the day before an election. Sponsor Sharon Grief, a Republican representative from Florence, said it would make elections more efficient and reduce long lines at election offices. Senate Bill 169 would more tightly define what type of ID a voter in Montana has to show. It would specifically require additional proof of residency for voters showing student IDs. Republican Senator Mike Cuff of Eureka sponsored the bill and said it was a reasonable way to ensure only Montana residents are voting. The Democrats' complaint argues there's no evidence the state's current laws were vulnerable to voter fraud and that the new limitations are only going to make it harder for people to vote. Governor Gianforte signed both of these bills into law on Monday, saying they would help ensure the continued integrity of Montana's elections for years to come. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. In recent years, generally between 1 and 2 percent of votes in Montana have been cast by people registering on Election Day. Still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, a family tradition. A local company steps up to the plate to help graduating seniors keep their agricultural dreams alive. That story next. And then a little later in sports, the pioneers of Miles Community College look to keep blazing forward at the Nationals. We'll have the highlights on the way.